Let's say that we have the equation 2 fifths x is equal to 10. How would you go about solving that? Well, you might be thinking to yourself, it would be nice if we just had an x on the left-hand side instead of a 2 fifths x, or if the coefficient on the x were 1 instead of a 2 fifths. And the way that we might do that is if we were to multiply both sides of this equation by 5 halves. Why 5 halves? Well, 5 halves, if you notice, when I multiply 5 halves times 2 fifths, it's going to get us to 1. 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10. So it's going to be 10 over 10, or 1. Or you could think about 5 divided by 5 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And you might say, is that magical? How did you think of 5 halves? Well, 5 halves is just the reciprocal of 2 fifths. I just swapped the numerator and the denominator to get 5 halves. And then why did I multiply it times the right-hand side? Well, anything I do to the left hand, I also want to do to the right hand. So the left-hand side simplifies to, this is all 1, so it's just going to be x is equal to, or we could say 1x is equal to 10 times 5 halves. That's the same thing as 50 halves. I could write it this way. 50 over 2, which is the same thing as 25. Let's do another example. Let's say we have the equation 14 is equal to 7 thirds b. See if you can solve this. Well, once again, it would be nice if the coefficient on the b weren't a 7 thirds, but instead were just a 1, if it just said b is equal to something. Well, we know how to do that. We can multiply both sides of this equation times the reciprocal of the coefficient on b, times the reciprocal of 7 thirds. What's the reciprocal of 7 thirds? Well, the denominator will become the numerator. The numerator becomes the denominator. It's going to be 3 sevenths. Now, of course, I can't just do it on one side. I have to do it on both sides. So on the right-hand side of this equation, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Those all cancel out to 1. So you're just left with 1b, or just a b. And 13 or 3 sevenths times 14, you might see this as 14 over 1. And you could say, okay, this is going to be 3 times 14 over 7 times 1. Or you could say, hey, let's divide both a numerator and a denominator by 7. So this could be 2, and this could be 1. So you're left with 3 times 2 over 1 times 1, which is just going to be equal to 6. Let's do another example. Let's say that we had 1 sixth a is equal to 2 thirds. How could we think about solving for a? Well, once again, it would be nice if this 1 6 were to become a 1. And we could do that by multiplying by 6. 6 sixths is the same thing as 1. And to make it clear that this is the reciprocal, we could just write 6 wholes as 6 1s, or 6 wholes. When you multiply these, this is all going to be equal to 1. So you're left with 1a on the left-hand side. But of course, you can't just do it on the left-hand side. You have to also do it on the right-hand side. So a is going to be equal to, over here, we could say 2 times 6 over 3 times 1. So that would be 12 thirds. Or we could say, look, 6 and 3 are both divisible by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times 1. So it's going to be 4 wholes, or just 4. And we're done.